Hello and welcome to my sixth Mist 3D tutorial. And in this tutorial I'll just show you how to set up a collision between two objects. And I think you'll really like that because collisions are a very important part of game programming and game making. So yeah, sorry for not posting so long. I was just working on a project. So yeah, thanks for watching this, I guess. And yeah, and remember when I showed you how to make the bottle models and use Autodesk a bit? You can actually make scenes with that too. You can make a lot with Autodesk and there are other 3D modeling programs that work too. So yeah, once you have a good knowledge of a 3D modeling program, you can already make awesome graphics for your games. So that's a good thing. And yes, yeah, so now let's get to the tutorial. So here we have our previous code, and I modified it a bit. Here we have our bottle. I just added a color to the bottle. I made it orange, some tint of orange. And here I have a cube. I just made a cube. Position entity cube. Positioned it a bit to the left of the cube of our bottle, and I just colored it yellow, some shade of yellow. And I just made a cube to demonstrate the collision between the bottle and the cube. Now, if we run this... Oh, yeah. Yeah, controls are the same. Whatever. So, if we run this program right now, we see a bottle and a cube. Now, if I move this bottle into the cube using our key controls, the cube doesn't react. We just move right through the cube. Nothing happens. Now, we're going to learn how to stop that and make a collision. So, this won't actually happen. So yeah, to start, let's just close this window, and let's go down here into the while loop, make some space, and go to if collision. And what the collision tells us, it's it checks to see if there's a collision between two objects. Okay, so yeah, oh no, sorry, not if collision. We're setting up collision, so we just make it a statement, not an if statement. So just go to collisions, and then there's going to be like bottle, comma, uh, box, comma, two, comma, two, two factors of the collisions. But so far, we can't just write the entity names or variable names. Not variable names, but, well, we can't write just object names because they're just they're basically game objects and we need to make them into variables or types. We need to assign certain types to these two objects to make sure we can set up a collision. To make sure we can set up because collisions only take type objects and we just need to attach types to these two objects and then use a reference to the type when we make our collisions. So to do that, this might sound confusing at first, just Bear with me, and you'll be cleared in a couple of seconds, probably, or a couple of minutes. Just go to the top, and we're creating two variables. Type underscore bottle. It can really be anything. It's just really nice to keep all of your variables and code organized. Just go to type underscore bottle equals one. And then go to type underscore, sorry, type underscore box or cube equals two. Now once you've set that up, let's assign these types to our object. And we will do that using the entity type command. Sorry. T sorry, it's not very not really working out. Entity type command. How we do that? Entity type bottle, comma, type, underscore, bottle. And that's all. We just assign the type of type bottle to bottle, to our object bottle. And we do the same with the cube. We just assign the type that we created, type box, just entity type cube, comma, type, underscore, box. And that's it. Now we can make a setup collision through these types that we assigned to our objects right here. 
So let's go to our while loop. And here are collisions. Type underscore bottle, comma, type underscore box, comma two, comma two. Now these are just two factors that tell us how to render the collision at the end. And here we just set up a collision between these two objects. Collisions type underscore bottle, comma, type underscore box, comma, two, comma, two. Now this is a very important step that's very easy to forget. When you set up the collisions, we have set up nothing to check for the collision. This is very similar to render world, which renders the graphics onto our front buffer. Except now, we put update world. And what update world does is it doesn't check for the graphics, it checks for the collisions and renders them so they work normally. There you go. And now, if we run this program, let's try to move into our cube. And we can't even get close to the cube. Well, we can right here, and I can't move through to the cube. But off, off the sides, we can't even get close to the cube. Off the bottom, we can, kind of. And off the top, we can, like, really little. There you go. Now we have a collision set up, but let's say that we needed to crash into this object and we couldn't. Then, we use something called an entity radius command. And what the entity radius command does is it specifies our collision radius for something. Now here we go to our create cube section and put entity radius cube comma 0 0.1. Now you can really experiment with this to find what's your best radius, collision radius. And here I set it to 0 0.1. Let's see what happens. Damn. Can't really get too far. Now if you set the radius to 0 0.5 to run that program. There you go. But, let's just put the entity radius command onto our bottle slash player. Then we might see a bigger change since it's the currently moving object. Oh yeah, sorry, entity whatever. There we go. Bottle. There. Okay. There we go. Now we have some change. There we go. Now you can see that we can obviously get much closer to the box. And if we change our radius to for our entity radius bottle, if we change it to 0 0.1. Sorry, I just clicked outside. Let's just check that. If I changed it suddenly to 0 0.1, I can get even closer, since we're minimizing our radius. And the smaller your radius is, the closer you can get to the object. So I just want to keep it at 0 0.5. That's a normal radius for an object. Here we move normally. Pretty normal, I guess. You can put a radius of 1, 0 0.5, any radius that works for your game currently. So there we go. We set up our radius. Pretty cool, I guess. Not, not the best, but yeah, we basically set up our basic collision. So in the next tutorial, I'll show you some collision functions. It's an extension of this tutorial, Collisions. So, yeah. See ya.